My name is Yulia Panfil. I'm the director of the Future of Property Rights program at New America. Uh, our program looks to bridge the gap between technologists and policymakers working in the land and property rights space. And as part of this initiative, we developed in partnership with Esri a series of six primers that explain in really easy, accessible terms six new and emerging technologies in the land and property rights space. And part of the reason we did that is that there is not currently a um, good amount of easily accessible, digestible material on these new technologies that policymakers, funders, implementers, NGOs can just kind of pick up and quickly orient themselves as to whether a technology is uh, useful, whether it solves the problem that they're trying to solve, uh, certain pitfalls that they may want to think about. Uh, and as a result, we see one of two things happening. Either we see uh, uh, actors in the land space sort of jumping on new technologies and treating them almost as a panacea and uh, hoping and assuming that a new technology will solve a range of problems that that technology isn't actually equipped to solve. Uh, so we've seen this uh, really uh, in the uh, blockchain example where early on after blockchain was introduced, we saw many uh, government policymakers jump on the technology and try to implement it to solve things like uh, digitizing records, which is not a problem that blockchain can help with. So after that boom, we saw kind of a bust and a, a wave of cynicism of policymakers kind of discarding the technology and saying, well, this is useless. This doesn't solve any of my problems. Well, in fact, the issue was that, uh, you know, the, the technology was being applied to problems that it couldn't solve. Uh, but on the flip side, blockchain can solve things like uh, increasing the, um, you know, tamper-proof nature of a land registry or improving data security. Uh, and then on the other side, because of a lack of accessible information on technologies, we just see a lack of uptake. Uh, policymakers, funders, it's not part of their kind of core job description to continuously be uh, getting up to speed on things like machine learning and self-sovereign identity. Uh, so <clears throat> if they don't have easy tools that can help them at least get a basic 101 understanding, then uh, they risk not uh, not being up to speed on these new technologies and kind of missing the opportunity to incorporate them into their work. So for those two reasons, we thought that a, an easy digestible uh, primer series would be a useful addition to the field. And uh, we teamed up with Esri to produce these six primers. Uh, so the webinar with Land Portal was a great opportunity to introduce these primers to a large audience uh, and also use that as a jumping off point to uh, talk about land transparency and corruption in the land and property rights space and how new technologies might help us uh, tackle this problem. Um, so we see technology as a potential leveler. Uh, the main purpose, I feel, of technology in the land sector is to make it easier, faster, and cheaper for people to map, document, and defend their rights. And I think what that translates to is that uh, land administration and uh, the act of um, improving tenure security is no longer only the domain of the government and of professional classes like surveyors. It means that uh, people in communities can take matters into their own hands and using widely available technologies can actually uh, help map their own land and property, document it, and build a record that helps them uh, defend it. So it's, it's an equalizer uh, between 
the poor and the marginalized and those in power. Uh, several years ago, I uh, managed a pilot called MAST, the Mobile Application to Secure Tenure, which was one of the first times that uh, simple mobile mapping tools on Android phones were given over to communities and community members themselves were trained to map their land uh, and to gather the biographical and other information that would be needed to register that land. Uh, we worked with several villages in rural parts of Tanzania to uh, pilot MAST, and uh, in those villages, indeed, the community members were able to map and document their own land, and those records were used by the district government to issue uh, CCROs, so official certificates of uh, customary land occupancy, to those communities. And that was the first time that those communities were able to access land records in any form. Um, that program has since been scaled up by USAID through the LTA program, which one of our uh, webinar panelists, Mustafa Issa, uh, is uh, involved in and helping to run. And that program, through a similar methodology, working directly with the communities has already documented and issued uh, more than 70,000 CCROs. So that's an example of technology really um, helping marginalized communities uh, get a bit of an e a more equal foothold when it comes to land and property. Uh, but also technology is a really important tool when it comes to transparency. At the most basic level, new technologies can actually Put pe literally put people on the map for the first time. So we've seen how um, machine learning and AI assisted uh, mapping is showing uh, slums in India, mapping those slums and actually showing uh, thousands and tens of thousands of people where the government doesn't have official record of them existing. So, you know, talk about transparency. You're literally for the first time seeing entire communities on the map. Um, similarly, we, uh, I've worked in the past with a great organization called the Amazon Conservation Team that works with indigenous peoples in uh, Colombia and other parts of the Amazon to help them uh, protect their lands. And a big part of protecting their lands is uh, mapping the land and applying for official recognition of that land as a, um, an indigenous territory. In Colombia, a uh, big problem related to the mapping and documentation of land is that some of the land is uh, very difficult to access if you want to survey by foot uh, because it's either mountainous or it's jungle territory. Some of the land is still uh, occupied by rebels and uh, FARC related groups and is too dangerous to walk on foot. So uh, that group introduced drone mapping into the equation and suddenly you were able to uh, map that land with a drone and um, see what was happening on the ground in that land um, in a way that you just couldn't do uh, by foot and was too expensive uh, to do through uh, purchasing, for example, um, you know, aircraft imagery. Uh, so that's an example of transparency uh, really being uh, aided by technology.